Hello there, I'm Ed Butler and welcome to Business Daily from the BBC. Today, as the fate of the Iranian nuclear deal seemingly hangs in the balance, we hear from an American lobbyist whose job it is to warn American businesses against dealing with the Islamic Republic. If you're doing business in Iran, there's a prospect that you'd be doing business with a terror-linked firm. We know that dual nationals in Iran are in great danger of being detained. Iran is one of the most aggressive users of hacking. So let's hear from that lobby group he mentions. United Against a Nuclear Iran, it's called. A non-profit which, as it happens, as it happens, has included the new Secretary of State, John Bolton, among its board members. The organization's president is David Ibsen. We try and spread awareness of the dangers of the Iranian regime, its sponsorship of terror, human rights violations, and how the prospect of that regime getting nuclear weapons would be a danger to regional and world peace. As part of that, we engage directly with corporations and companies to make them aware of the risks of doing business in Iran. You say you make them aware of the risks. Mm -hmm. You're threatening them. No, it's not threatening. We just advise them on a suite of risks that I think any financial officer or legal counsel would very much want to be aware of. Such as? Well, if you're doing business in Iran, there's a prospect that you could be doing business with a terror-linked firm. Islamic Revolutionary Guard controls many of the businesses and permeates almost all of the sectors of the economy. We know that dual nationals in Iran are in great danger of being detained arbitrarily, so your employees could be put at physical risk. Iran is one of the most aggressive users of hacking. They engage in a lot of corporate espionage, so your uh, intellectual property could be misused. And there's also really the risk of additional sanctions coming down the pike from the U.S., EU, and elsewhere. So you go into Iran, you do your due diligence, there's a chance that that business might become illegal in the near future. So I think combined, you see it's a very, very risky environment, and we think that most responsible businesses agree. You see, you put it like that, and it does sound very reasonable, but I've spoken to the CEO of Payment Wall, for example, one of the companies you've spoken to, and his feeling was, having spoken to you, that he was running the risk of some kind of public naming and shaming going on if he was to do any business with Iranian clients coming from you. In other words, it might lead to some kind of US-based boycott, it might lead to a public relations battle, and, and he just didn't need that heat. Well, that, that, that's, that's, that's fair, that's his opinion. We just want to make sure that all of the businesses, whether it's the CEO or the board members or the investors or the consumers of any product, are totally cognizant of what the risk framework looks like. So do you name and shame? mm -hmm. No, we don't think of it as naming and shaming. We think of it as responsible advising. But you publicize Um, the names of companies that do say they are dealing with the Iranians. On occasion, we do keep a record of reputable public media reports concerning companies' intentions to go into Iran, yes. Investors and consumers can make decisions accordingly. Anti-Iranian lobbyist David Ibsen. So given the pressures on American businesses, the scrapping of this deal may not make that much difference in the...